I'd like to welcome everybody into our webinar this morning. We're going to spend some time talking about smart pricing. And really, this is webinar one of six about this particular topic. Today's purpose is to just get an introduction to why does smart pricing matter? Where do we see it coming up in point of sale? Before we get into webinars two through six, where we're going to talk about actually configuring it behind the scenes. So again, kind of a paid political announcement, if you will. The next webinar, we're going to talk about some of the options as far as it relates to smart pricing, how you choose your configuration settings. And then three, four, and five, we'll talk about the different options of using either department, supplier, or what we call um, what, what we call uh, by associated labor. And then the last webinar, we're going to talk about what's called smart labor pricing. So again, an adjunct to this. Really, it's a separate entity, but it's part of the smart pricing umbrella or the smart matrix pricing umbrella, where we're going to look at a smart labor matrix inside of the system as well. I'm going to pick on any one of my open estimates or work in progress tickets. I've got my 2001 Dodge Durango that's in my system. And if I was to go ahead and look at any of the part records on my ticket, what you're going to notice is that I've got a cost per unit and a sell price per unit. None of those are revolutionary concepts. However, you know, what smart pricing does is smart pricing is what then takes when we enter a cost into the system, helps define here's what the selling price is going to be. So at its most basic, again, right now, this is at a 66.02% margin. And oh, by the way, by default, I'm using smart pricing inside of the system. So it's applied my pricing rules. If I went ahead and I just added a part onto a ticket, so I had to go buy a part from a specialty shop or a dealership, and we'll just say that that part number was not in my master inventory, when I put in the cost, and let's make it a dollar, what you'll notice is, well, when it's a dollar, it says, well, that's going to be $5.99 selling price to the consumer, or an 83% margin, and we're using smart pricing. Or if it was $10, now it's going to be $36.99, or a 73% margin, I'm rounding. If I added another zero in there to make it 100, now we're at a 50% margin, or even one more to 1,000, 33.38%. So again, what's deciding... When I vary this value here, what value comes up here as the selling price to the consumer is, again, what we call smart pricing. So, again, if I go back to something a little bit more reasonable, we'll go ahead and we'll make it a $10 price point as the cost for this part. It says, well, that's going to be a 72.97% margin. And there's this little question mark over here on the right-hand side. And what that does is that will tell us, well, how did it or why did it decide that a $10 part is going to sell for $36.99. So if I was to go ahead and click on that little question mark, it says, well, all right, here's why I've decided at a $10 cost point, it should be $36.99. So we're using outside purchase pricing rules. And again, when we get more into configuration, we'll talk about being able to vary outside purchase versus parts and inventory. And then it says my cost was $10. I'm using smart matrix and therefore the outside, the default outside purchase rule would apply, which means it works out to be a 3.67 times cost plus multiplier. And when I do the math, that's $36 and 70 cents. This supplier doesn't have an, a, an adjustment rule. And again, no supplier yet assigned. So therefore, obviously that'd be applicable. And then I do have a rounding rule in place and it makes it 36.99. That does not fall below my minimum price if I have one established for that cost range. So each time we change the cost, let's make it a $25 cost. And now that falls to a 66% margin. But if I wanted to know why, well, let's see, 2.92 becomes the cost plus multiplier or $73 even with a rounding parameter, taking it up to $73.99. So again, at its most basic, smart pricing is when I put a value here, how does it decide the value that should be here? Now, there's a couple of different caveats or other nuances to that as we go along. I'm going to put a part number that's in my master inventory. And I'll pull up my oil filter. It's a 21334 oil filter. And again, when I add that on, you'll notice it's $1.48,799 is the selling price. And oh, by the way, we're also using smart pricing here. However, this time we're using what we call stock pricing rules. You'll notice there's a few more lines listed here as to why it decided that that should be the price. In this case, again, this is an inventory part. It's costing $1.48, and so therefore, we're using department linear pricing, and so therefore, I've got my oil filter department with its own matrix. We're going to mark that up two and a half times, which works out to be $3.70. 
But oh, by the way, with minimum pricing rules, it becomes $6.99, and actually, that's the actual inventory price. $7.99 is what I've set on that value when we put it in there. So again, each time we go take a look. Now, if I was going to look at this part number in my master inventory, let me go search inventory and then click on go to INV. And if I come into this window here, again, I think the 21334 muffler. Let me go back and let me go ahead and let me pull up just that 21334 oil filter. And I apologize for grabbing the wrong one. You'll notice quantity of one. And I'm sorry, let me get into my search inventory and then go to my inventory for that oil filter. That's where I wanted the land, so $1.48. And then when I click on Calc Prices, what Calc Prices does is it says, well, I'm going to assign for price one, not two, three, four, and five, smart pricing or smart matrix pricing only looks at price one in our inventory. And I'm going to calculate out what the selling price should be. Now, if I wanted to, I could make a modification away from that. So if I didn't want to charge what that rounded number would be, but in this case, when I click on Calc Prices, price one comes from the smart pricing rules that are assigned to this part in my inventory. Again, to my statement that I had made previously, you have the ability to define different rules for parts that are in your inventory versus parts that you're buying on the outside. When we get into the initial configuration here in a webinar in just about 45 minutes or so, we'll talk a little more about some of those different options as we go along. I want to continue on with my conversation about parts before we go ahead and talk about smart labor as it relates to point of sale. I'm going to go to smart e-job and or smart e-cat. doesn't necessarily matter which one, but I want to get out into my catalog. And as we go into the catalog, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up a basic part. How about an air filter? When I get into my air filter, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have it search my local vendors for pricing and availability. And it's going to find not only do I have these on my shelf, but also we have them available from our outside purchase vendors. Again, if I'm buying that off of my, if I'm getting it off my shelf, 212 is my cost and my pricing rules say 899 would be the selling price. Again, that would be the same as that 21334 oil filter. Where smart pricing comes into play more as far as our catalogs are concerned is, well, we went out to the vendor and we said, well, let's see, I'm looking to buy this filter. And they said, well, that would be $10.99. That would be your cost. And then it marked it up or it decided that $39.99 would be the applicable selling price for that particular part. So again, it's using smart pricing for every one of these cost values to determine based upon where my pricing rules are set and the cost that I've received back from the vendor, where should I set or how should that price calculate as we go through? <coughs> Pardon me a second. So I'm going to get into configuration here just for a moment you know, outside or out in Smarty Cat. You'll notice there is a tab here that says pricing, and the relevant piece is this section here where it says supplier pricing. You'll notice for each of my individual suppliers, I have the ability to define a pricing rule. And in my case, I'm using Smart Matrix pricing by supplier for everybody except for one of my tire vendors where I'm having the system just bring across my list price. But so again, once we define the matrix, we can then go in and we can tell it for our outside purchase vendors whether we should use that calculated markup or whether we should use some other parameter. Again, most typically it'd be a markup based upon list as we go through. So again, smart pricing, not just as we're adding a part to a ticket, but as we're using SmartyCAD as well. That's how it's deciding where it should mark up that price. Before we finish with our introduction, because again, we want to just get some baseline before we get into some of the guts behind it in our configuration webinars, one last piece as far as smart pricing is concerned, that is I'm going to go ahead and pull up any labor line. You notice in the lower right hand corner, there is a checkbox there. Now in my case, I've got what's called smart labor pricing turned off or a labor matrix turned off in the system. But as part of our webinar series, we're going to talk about smart labor pricing. And the way that that works, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close back out of here for just a moment. I'm going to jump into configuration and under labor just for a moment, I'm going to turn on what's called smart labor pricing. You'll notice in the far lower left hand corner, if I tell it to use smart labor pricing. Now, in order to have that take effect, I've got to close and reopen our writer. But after I close and reopen, what we're going to see is that exact same job that was there we're going to be able to either turn on or off 
smart labor pricing and when applicable, it will go ahead and recalculate the selling price of my labor as we go along. So again, we'll give it just a moment here to come up with the R.O. Writer main window. And then when we do, we'll get back into my 2001 Dodge Durango. And again, as we're in that estimate and I pull up this window here, what smart labor does is smart labor gives us an opportunity to adjust the selling price of my labor based upon the number of hours. You'll notice again, if we make the math easy, I say this is a one hour job, smart labor pricing based upon how I have it configured, just uses a flat one times cost plus multiplier. If I made that a three hour job, now again, without making anybody do any math, three times 85 should be $255. However, smart labor pricing or a labor matrix says, well, no, at a three hour job, we're going to mark that up. In this case, we're marking it up just a little bit to 277 95 that same little question mark there where I can ask the system well Why did you decide to mark that up? And in this case this labor operation and category have a matrix Which is going to use the default smart labor matrix to mark it up 1.09 times or 277.95 as we go through again We'll get a little bit more into the concepts of smart labor and or a labor matrix as we get into the configuration side of that That'll be the last of our series of six webinars as far as smart pricing is concerned. But so two places, or I'm sorry, two different elements that are included in, in the smart matrix pricing, you know, either the part side and or the labor side, and both will take effect as we're going through the catalog as well. So again, we're going through Smart ECAT, we'll pick up my smart pricing. If we're going through Smart ECAT, it'll pick up my labor pricing. The one caveat or exemption there would be we do have other what we call punch out catalog integrations, meaning I'm going to go direct to Napa, I'm going to go to next part, I'm going to go to DST, or whatever other punch-out catalog we're using. As we're coming back from those punch-out catalogs, it will apply the smart pricing as we get back over to our transaction or back over to our writer. As you're looking at next part's website or Napa's website or DST's website, we don't necessarily have the opportunity to modify pricing on the vendor websites. So again, unlike SmartyCat, where we see the pricing applied immediately real time, with some of those punch out catalogs, until we get back over to our writer, it's then when it would go ahead and apply my smart pricing rules to determine the selling price to the consumer.